Since 1948, during the last uh, 60 years, uh, we have been maintaining so many uh, missions. Now we have over 115,000 peacekeepers, both military, civilian and police. Less than 10 years ago, we had only 20,000 peacekeepers. Today we have 115,000 in mostly 15 peacekeeping missions all over the world. We're not the first response of the international community. We tend to be the last. We are engaged in a little over half of all the armed conflicts in the world. On all continents, from Haiti to Timor, Kosovo, Ivory Coast, Sudan, DRC, and Middle East, of course, Lebanon. The countries where UN peacekeeping has been a key part of the transition from conflict to an enduring peace. I would start with Namibia, Mozambique, there were a whole series of them in Central America, starting with El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, Central Asia, we had Tajikistan, Southeast Asia, we had Cambodia, West Africa, great progress in Sierra Leone and Liberia. The United Nations peacekeeping forces deploy at a moment where people who are there are making a decision as to whether or not it's safe for them to put down the gun. What it does is it buys time, it buys space for that peace to take hold. The world needs the UN to be in countries where the major players are not going or, or don't want to go. Former Secretary General Jack Hammarskjöld had a line that the United Nations will never take people to heaven, but it can stop them from going to hell. If there was no UN peacekeeping in the world today, more people would be dying in violent conflict. When a war ends in our age, four out of ten of those conflicts will lapse back into conflict within 10 years. If you deploy a UN peacekeeping mission, then you can about halve the chances of that country relapsing back into conflict. The Security Council has mandated 63 uh, peacekeeping missions in the last uh, 60 years, and 45 of those have been closed down, and most of them successfully. Achieving some kind of stability, some kind of peace, creating a space where you can actually start rebuilding. The conflict has broken many parts of a society. The government is contested, the army is divided or non-existent, the police may have broken down. When a society is broken by conflict, you need to bring all of the elements together. To go into places where there's been no real governance for decades to try and not only put an end to violence but help build the foundations of functioning states and functioning societies is, is a tall order for anyone. Hopefully the future of peacekeeping is no more peacekeeping. I wish that uh, one day we would not have uh, any necessity of uh, deploying uh, UN peacekeepers. That was my message. I really hoped that I would not see any children who would suffer from hunger, who would suffer from conflicts, and who would suffer from the threat of their uh, safety and security. In 1991, there were 17 major conflicts. That is 17 conflicts that killed more than 1,000 people a year and 35 second order conflicts. Thanks largely to UN peacekeeping, we've cut that by about half. What happens at the end of a successful peacekeeping deployment is that we've helped to enable the local population to take care of these issues themselves. We don't do for them. We basically enable them to do. It is within the capacity of our generation to end armed conflict in the world. Mankind has lived for thousands of years with armed conflict and it is within our reach to end it.